Hello and welcome to the new High Tech Oil Super Series. It's round number one that starts at Winton Motor Raceway, two hours north of Melbourne in Victoria. It is sunny and warm here, but the racing is super close. Headlined by the TA2 Muscle Cars. It's great to see the Mustangs, Camaros and Dodgers out on track. They look so ominous as they go around here at Winton Motor Raceway. And they're going to put on some fantastic racing throughout this 2023 season. And let's have a look at the calendar. We kick it off here at Winton Motor Raceway before heading to Hidden Valley Raceway up in Darwin. Then it's the Queensland Raceway. Then we go a little bit further west into Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland, then to Sydney Motorsport Park before we head down to the historic Calder Park to finish the season off. They're getting ready in the pits here to come out on track for the Australian Super TT Championship. And for race number four, let's have a look at the starting grid. Scott Nine in the number one position, followed by Mark Tracy, Danny Burgess, Josh Hurrigan, Robert Marchese, Brent Edwards, Michael Ricketts, Ryan Bell, Trev Drummond, and Mark Ranger round out your top 10. Position 11 is Zach O'Hara, then it's Lawrence McKinnon, Nick Petit, Russell Della, Rob Bowden, Martin Doxey, David Bailey, Michael Heppleston, Aaron Lloyd, and David Bunton in 20th. And Wade, it's a stacked field here this weekend. Rolling starts, and it's a pretty good launch. We're underway, not surprisingly, nine. We'll head down into turn one, the leader. I fancy the Beamer would be a little bit better under brakes, however. Definitely does pull up a lot better under brakes, the Beamer there, as they get through turn number one, and no surprise, they get back to that familiar one, two, three out on track. Good to see the Astra getting through as well. As we see him going to turn number three, they're starting to go too wide, a whole list of Falcons, and then, of course, we get our little E36 BMW under two litre class wound in between them. And look at this, Lotus Lotus and Lisa Christmas. alongside a NASCAR style. Wow, you don't see that every day, do you? I was just going to say, when you look through the order, you've got a BMW, you've got Chevy Ostrux, you've got a Silverado, you've got AU Falcon, Chevy Luminous, Nissan Pulsars, Lotus Elises, XZ Ford Falcons, Holden Astras, just incredible Thunderbirds, and even a Mitsubishi Evo 6, just to make the whole melting pot even more creative. Neat little battle we got going on here. The Beamer has done a nice job. That's the way you do it. Mark Tracy in the BMW E36 now has to race speed. The nimble nature of the Beamer will certainly give it some sort of advantage in different places here. Yeah, definitely through that cleavage section of the racetrack, but watch for the power though as they come onto the straight and see if they can hold out nine as they starting to come around one more turn before they head down to the start finish line to complete the first of 10 laps in this race number four of the Australian Super TT Championship. And look at him. He's got a nice launch out of the corner and he stays in front. We'll see if he can catch him. Maybe he's going to get the win over this one. Tracy now leading his first time here this weekend in the BMW. And look at him out of turn number two. So confident that car is very sort of in the background. The Oz truck slide around Burgess and Hurrigan. They slide out of two and now they come down to three hard under brakes and the lick of flame coming out that right hand side of the vehicle. The cable source Falcon now in fifth position there of Edwards and that's a turbocharged uh, Ford motor of course in line six on board he's had a couple of dramas in some races earlier today chasing some mechanical gremlins since they did the engine conversion on this car looking very Ooh. comfortable in race three and now in race four fifth position this is going to be a really tricky part of the racetrack for any car doesn't matter how balanced your setup is but working your way through the cleavage there's so much weight transfer going on from side to side through this series of S-Bends. We watch the BNI number 18 car of Edwards, the cable source Falcon. I've got to think to myself that Tracy was a little bit quietly confident about how things could work out in the Twin City Roller Doors Beamer because that thing is extremely competitive and it's giving Scott Nine plenty of headaches right now. He might come down to their tyres and race them. Very yeah. hard to beat early on. You can see that Nine now is starting to fall back into the clutches of Burgess as well, who's ominous in the background in the truck. And they've been one, two, and three so far this weekend. Of course, Tracy and Nine have changed that around between one and two. But that fifth position there, Edwards, just lurking in the background of the XR6. And now we go back. I love this little battle there when you go back. It's going to be Ricketts there. Uh, he's battling it out now with McKeezy. And Granger right behind, so he's in the middle of that one too. And Ricketts in what is a turbocharged SR24 cylinder in that S14 Pulsar. 
obviously Ken Racing production class put together by the Jordan Cox Motorsport. You know that name from uh, many other racing pedigrees. And very, very quick car in the last race. We did see Granger, though, have a couple of off-track excursions which pushed him back down. He has been very strong in the first couple of races, but went back down a little bit in race number three there, where he ended up getting all the way back down. Let's have a look. He was down in 10th position, so he's had a bit of a move now up two positions. I love that when you look out there, you see Richard White actually looks like a little like Dale Earnhardt. He's even got the Intimidator number three livery as he works his way out of that turn number four. As you said, you've got a little bit of something for everyone. The big motorcraft Falcon looks mean out there as well. This is a good little battle. Ricketts and the young car wash number 41. Putting together a pretty solid drive. We're working lap three of ten. And it's the High Tech Oil Super Series Round One, Australian Super TT and Stock Cars. Fourth and final race of the weekend. And everybody brings something a little different to the table where you might be quicker than all. Oh, look at this, this is a good example. The nine was the quickest lap before, 129.37. So it was a third of a second quicker than Tracy on the previous lap world's fastest fire brigade bmw it's got that very much that fire brigade look about it doesn't it the twin city roller doors entry thing is quick though nine trying to wind up the mustang to head towards turn five this sweeping left hander now mark tracy though has marked up that front tire with that big brake lock up with some earlier so nine might be able to take advantage of this he's not going to be able to through this section you think the mid will be in w there although it's got the ls conversion a little bit in the front the chassis set up on those cars going to be advantageous as they go through this really windy section down the back. We come onto the main straight, and that's where it's really going to be nine, whether he can apply the pressure. Oh, oh. just <laughs> got on the anchors and then the gas a little too early. The town only stepped out. There's the Earnhardt looking like good wrench. Number three car beautifully turned out. Martin Doxy though, and the turbocharged oh, Astro. So. <laughs> that's. When have you ever seen, thought of that, you're going to see a turbocharged Astra take on a NASCAR-style Dale Earnhardt livery here on track. But it's right here at the High Tech Oil Super Series. And let's have a look. They go side by side. They're going to go around one of the back markers there. And look at Nine. He's got one wheel almost oh, in the grass. He just took the lead there. Wow. Nine, what an incredible place to make the pass. They went either side of the lap car, and he ended up in front in all that. 129 1 2 was his fastest lap, and the Mustang is now starting to look very good. The stock car, Tracy trying to come back at him. Good little race, lap 5 of 10. Look at Tracy using every little bit of the ripple strip, moving the car side to side out there on track. The big left hand sweeper there. They get up on the edge of the tyre. Wow, you can see how much profile is showing there on the BMW as the weight transfer happens on the right hand side of the car. Go through this back section, you'll see Tracy really close the gap up here. He won't want to let Nine get away too far. You see how wide he goes, tries to sit him out himself up so he gets a straight run on here. Yep, there you go. Turns around the corner, Ooh, tries to square it off, get a run. Still going through some of these under two litre BMWs in the back and the 1.8 litre BMWs as part of the Australia Super TT Championship. Gee, I'm really impressed with the drive from Nine right now. Getting quicker as this race wears on. Tracy in second, Burgess in third, Hurrigan, Edwards, Marchese. Once again, another really different brand of car out there. The Evo having a bit of a crack. Yeah, ninth position, Trev Drummond now, and he's battling out with the 370Z. And Bell, Ryan Bell now going to come back down the inside. They are really tussling it out now for Ooh. position number nine. That could be good, ugly. It could have. They're going down. Who's going to be the one under brakes into turn number 10, the left-hander? Bell has to let Drummond just go through on this one. He can't fight back to as they exit out of turn number 10. Coming around to complete lap number six, these two drivers. Ryan Bell last time was fighting it out with the little Nissan Pulsar of Ricketts. He's not quite there this race. It's great to see the Nissan side-by-side -side going at it. So he's had a fantastic weekend. Ryan Bell, making sure he goes door-to-door. -door. He's, he's had some sort of Entertainment, I suppose, some sort of race with somebody throughout the weekend. <laughs> Rob Bowden, who's the number one in the under two litre tread class that you see him on screen, doing a fantastic job there in the BMW. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Look at the amount of yeah. grass. He is in. 
he's just That's not gonna be good. taken so much in the radiator. How hot is that car now going to get away with all that grass in front? No airflow going over that. Tracy. Do you know what's amazing is now that his tyres have really started to heat up on nine, he's now down to a 127.93. So he has really stepped it up and maybe that was that little bit of extra pressure that he was putting on to drive away from Tracy that's really become quite telling that result. So Burgess now, maybe he can start to try and run down our race leader, though he's about seven and a half seconds off the pace of our race leader, the Intercontinental Services number 16 car. Can't believe how much he's really stepped it up. Well, just under four laps to go and Mark Tracy now, we're going to have to see whether that is yeah. going to come into play, that amount of grass in front of the car. This is called though, the Lotus Elise there. Going through, and of course, he's got the supercharged Honda engine on board, so he really screams as it goes down the track. Here, the whine of the supercharger as he gets involved in plenty out of on track action. David Bunton there in the Lotus moves out of the way very nicely and obligingly. That allows Tracy to scoot around the outside in the Beamer. I wonder what caused that that he ended up off track and with a radiator full of dry grass. Either way, it's not what you want. You want as much airflow as you can, and he's very warm conditions so he went off the track quite early before the left-hander so it comes back on but I'm not sure that we know really what started all that. 16 strong commanding lead now in the race number four for the Australian TT Championship here at the High Tech Oil Super Series Winter Motor Raceway. I really thought this was going to be a battle that would go on for the entire race I'm kind of a bit surprised I thought Tracy had something for him particularly early but Scotty has been the Form guide this weekend, that Twin City Roller Doors entry was certainly a nuisance early to Scott Nine, Mark Tracy in the BMW E36, Danny Burgess in the Chevy Ostruck is in third, Mark Cheesy in the High Winds Olives Chevy Silverado. Silverado is like Silverado, it's just a different <laughs> word that's said correctly. Then you go back to Brent Edwards in the Cable Source Ford Falcon XR6. Mark Ranger, of course, in the Peter Mann Automotive Ford Falcon AU. 27 car on screen. Good to see so many of the NASCARs getting around out there, the old stock cars. Yeah, uh, Zach O'Hara, who's in ninth well, I think he's gone past, oh, sorry, he's in ninth position at the moment. Yeah. Bell just behind him in the Evo and the 370Z, your leader out there now, the number 16 Infinity. Another one lap to go, Matty Cab. This has been a business-like weekend, that is for sure. The Stang in very, very good touch as he heads towards turn five, about to put a lap on the Beamer. That sweeping left-hander, he moves to the outside. Nice work, too, to just stay out of the way. It's Aaron Lloyd in the Pascal Group. Murphy's tyre power, BMW E36, the under two-litre version. They've got their own little category going on within the category yeah. this weekend. Of course, the E36 championship that they all compete in as well. We see Rob Bowden with the number one on the side. Commanding lead though for nine as he goes around. Mark Tracy, well, he's going to want to get in the pits. So he's in it's second position again. He's cleared a little bit. He has a little bit too far away from them, only about half a second a lap. And of course, he's got his young fella coming out in the trophy class for the Honda Excel's next race as well. So the Tracy crew down there. Very busy this weekend. Absolutely. Nine is about to wrap things up. It has been a solid weekend. He certainly had the pressure early from Tracy, from this man on screen, but he'll have to watch. Scotty get this win in the end by almost eight seconds, and that's largely due to the fact that the BMW went agricultural earlier on. Congratulations to Scott Nine. He will get the win. And the LCS trailer, Thermo King Ford NASCAR Mustang. And Mark Trace behind him in the V8 powered BMW. Danny Burgess in the Oz truck in third, and we'll be interviewing them right very, very shortly. We've had a few chats with them this weekend. Josh Hurrigan behind in fourth position, moves up a place from last race. Brent Edwards there in fifth. Robert McKeezy in sixth. Mark Ranger comes back from tenth position to be in seventh. Michael Ricketts, Zakahara, and Ryan Bell round out your top ten. As we turn the page in eleventh position is Ryan Bell, and rounding out your top twenty is Aaron Lloyd. Let's head down to Steve though with our round one winner. Well done, round winner. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, just trying to give it to those stock cars out there. Just ran out a bit of brakes down the bottom, and the brake pedal in just a bit far. I got didn't heel and tow it, and I just didn't collect that gear. I, I bet it was a great race. It's a great race. I've got in front to start and just to hold him up, but that thing's got way too much horsepower. But, but you know, it is, you don't need the horsepower to win the races either. 
Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, after round one, let's have a look at our championship standings in the over two litre slicks. Mark Tracy, over two litre treaded Ryan Bell, under two litre slicks, Martin Doxey, under two litre treaded Michael Ricketts, and in Stock Cars Australia, number one, Scott Nine, with Danny Burgess and Josh Hurrigan rounding out your top three. We're going to go to a short break up next, but do not go anywhere because coming your way, the RX8 Cup. Welcome back to round number one of the High Tech Oils Super Series from Winton Motor Raceway and it's the RX8 Cup about to come your way. Race number four for the weekend, all thanks to Yellow Express, the man with the van, as you can see up on your screen there, Justin Lewis, having a fantastic weekend. Let's have a look at how it's going to start though. Ryan Gorton, hard charging, made his way back up into the number one position for this race. And it's Justin Barnes in second. Justin Lewis, Yellow Express entry in third. Luke Weber, Jack Panaccia, Ben Shaw, Ben Silverstrow, Miles Braguglio, Thomas Derwin and Terence Lewis round out your top ten. Terence having an up and down day out on track. We saw him start a little bit further up the field, but he's worked his way back down. Let's see how he goes. Jackson Noakes is in 11th position. Then it's William Hamm, David Grice, Martin Lyle, Ash McConchie from the New Zealander that's made his way across to be part of this weekend. Maisie Place in 16th. Tom Shaw out with mechanical issues. So here we go. Well, let's see how Gordon goes on the inside. We've seen how quick he has been this weekend. The Yellow Express RX8 Cup race number four about to get underway here at the High Tech Oils Super Series round number one at Winton Motor Raceway. On the outside of him, of course, it is Barnes. And can he come around the outside? We'll have to wait and see if he can do the work in the just-in-time auto glass entry. This cloud cover has really helped to keep the weather temperature down a bit. Oh, ripping start in the end for the 15 car of Gordon. Just well and truly clear enough to even move over to the right and set up his own apex. That is a textbook start, that's for sure. This is lap one of eight, listen to that. Plenty of RPMs, plenty of competitive cars and a very, very good little series. The Yellow Express RX8 series. It is busy going into turn number three right now. Side by side right there. Your leader opening up a nice little advantage as well. Already is Ryan Gorton. Yeah, of course, he's fallen back into second position there. Justin Barnes now exactly where they started. We look back a bit further back. Panaccio now is down in... Please move back wow. down to fifth position there. You've got to watch out there. The 26 Weber just in front of him. Yeah, Luke got a really good run just then into that right-hander. They worked their way through the cleavage section here at Winton. Great to have your company. It's round one of the High Tech Oils Super Series. And, man, there's going to be some amazing geography we're going to cover this year in the series, Matty Cab. We head to the TA2 Muscle Cars are pumped to be going to Darwin, to the top end for Hidden Valley Raceway. That's going to be an amazing weekend. Queensland Raceway for round three on the June 2-4 to four weekend. Morgan Park, which always turns out some great racing in July. Sydney Motorsport Park under lights. That'll be in October. Hoping to get to the bend as well. That round in October, late October. And then Calder Park Raceway. Heading back to the spiritual home of Australian NASCAR racing. Not on the super speedway, but right next to the same venue. Yeah, now. that's all that matters. We're still going to drive in those gates and get that sense as we move on to lap two of the Yellow Express RX8 car. And I love as they gear down in these cars. We get the leg of flame come out of that exhaust. We look back. Terry Ooh, Lewis now wow. fighting it out. You can see he is down in seventh position at the moment. He was battling out. He got a fourth place in race number two earlier. Gee, Miles. Unfortunately, fell back down the field a little bit. Miles Bregulio really had a crack at the ripple strip just then coming through turn one and two somebody off the edge of the racetrack just a bit out of turn four and these cars too would be very big in momentum if you scrub off any kind of speed you're going to drop a ton of ground neat little battle going on about fifth and sixth Panaccia, Shaw, Lewis, Bregulio, Silvestro, Derwent that's your top ten back to Lyle, Noakes, Grice, Ham and McConchie just goes past and he's had a very successful this weekend getting on the podium in every race so far we'll see if he can hold on to that one in third position Luke Weber will try and challenge him there's a fair bit of gap back to him you see in that blue car before he's got Panacho 
right behind him and Ben Shaw was challenging Panache the last race to see if he could get a manoeuvre done the last couple of laps and he's still there in the background right behind him though. Terry Lewis is looking for a comeback in this race. It was very unfortunate. Race number three just kept going a little bit wide, dropped back through the field. I feel like he might have had some sort of issue in the car. And the rotary motion number 29 but he is very quick out there and of course works on his brother's car. Justin Lewis who's up in front in a former production car. Winner back in the 90s. Wow, so were you even born then? Just. <sighs> Just. Leave, leave that alone. Oh, I do love that, as you said before, that lick of flame. Wow, plenty of attitude just then from Panaccia in the four car. Turn one and two, they're fully committed. You come down that straight away and then just kick her in. They're very forgiving, the RX-8. It's a very nimble package. Can't miss the Yellow Express number 50, can you, of Lewis? That thing really looks mean. He'll have the shades on in the car as well. I think he comes with about 20 different sunglasses. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he likes, Brings he likes to style. change them up. We'll see what he does, if he can get on the podium whether he's got a new set on Ooh. here this afternoon. But side by side as they go through, it looks like Terry Lewis having a go at Ben Shaw out there. Might not get the move done. No, he doesn't as he heads through Ooh. the cleavage section of the racetrack after turn number seven. It's a good battle though. That, that battle on screen just there coming towards us now to the, this one here. This is a ripping bat, the rotary motion entry. This is really going on. Terence Lewis battling hard with Ben Shaw. I think that right now is probably the pick of the litter when it comes to race battles. There they are, swinging in, turn 10. Lewis just trying to keep the momentum up. If he can get a good run off that corner. We're working lap three, about to be lap four of eight. Gordon is just blitzing them. 138.04 on lap number two compared to a 138.6 for Barnes. Lewis, Weber, Panaccia, Shaw, Lewis, Brigulio, back then to Silvestro and Derwent in that 54 car. I don't know how Ryan Gordon's doing. He's picked the pace up again. The only car to do a 137 in this race so far. So he is going oh. seven tenths of a second faster on that last Six. lap. As you look at this, Lewis now under a bit of pressure there from Luke Weber, and he pulls up alongside him, puts a nose wow. in, and Lewis shuts it down. Make sure he closes it for him. He puts the Yellow Express RX-8 in the way. And Ooh. in the meantime, Panaccio now is coming up behind from fifth position. He can make two places here if these guys don't play nice out on track. Even if they do play nice, he's still got <laughs> half a chance. This is very good. Last couple of races have been absolute belters, Matty Cav. Going to be a big year ahead. Don't forget to get around all the socials on the High Tech Oils Super Series. Get across Facebook and Insta and all the socials, all the WWWs. And check out all the actions. We give you a rundown of all the points. It's a very arty shot, that one. I do like this here as they come around to number... What's the middle section there? Turn number eight. It is as they go around and we're checking out the cars now. Looks like Terry Lewis has got the move done on Ben Shaw as well to move up in a sixth position. Roguglio now putting a lot of pressure on to Shaw and that's going to be a fantastic fight now for seventh position in the background as well. We'll watch that as we go. In the meantime, let's head back to this battle for third position with Justin Lewis looking for another podium. Luke Weber, the man from Cootamundra out there. Got his mechanical business. Loves racing the RX-8 Cup, enjoys it. Had a big day yesterday, said the heat oh. really took it out of him. <laughs> this, this is going to be, this is going to be entertaining. I get the feeling here, particularly down to this corner. This has been very, very hot so far, and I think it's going to get even hotter. This battle right here, this left-hander, is not quite as close as I thought he would be just there. I think some of the difference with these vehicles is they've still got ABS on board. But when you look at the engine bay of an RX-8 Cup car, it's almost stock. You can't tell the difference between that and a road-going car. So still with the full ABS package, means they can break really late. And look at him, he wants to get right on the back oh. of Lewis Weber. Come on, have a crack, son. Oh, there's got to be a corner coming up soon. Panaccio in the background, will he just try and go past both of them if he can get a good run? Maybe that's the go. The man with the van, though, Justin Lewis, holding on to third position at the moment. Grabs a little bit of curve, but he slides the car out. We saw this as the race went on. Pressure. Last time. That's all it is, is pressure. And now that Dale Patterson motorsport entry of Jack Panaccia coming right on in that four car. So this is a ripping battle. We're working lap five of eight. Getting to the business end, and all of a sudden, the DPM car is closing in. This is a great race. Three of a minute. 
can see Ryan Gordon and Justin Barnes have just yeah. extended their lead in Good first night. and second. Look at that, four and a half seconds between Gordon and Barnes and another three seconds back to Lewis. But it is that real battle for third position. Let's have a look as we get back down the, the pack a little bit here with the 85 car there of Ben Silvestro in ninth position. Derwent just behind him. And Miles Bregulio out there as well in that Penrite car. We come back to the main straightaway. We get onto lap six of eight. This time, Weber is closer this time. So has he got anything under brakes? Four, Weber, Lewis, those two, that battle for second, third, and fourth. Here we go again. Not quite close enough. I'd say the 50 car is really good. Lewis is really, really good in one and two. This is where you just see Weber come back at him a bit in this section here, but turn one and two is critical at this place. Ben Shawna having another go at Terry Lewis. It's like he's had a little bit of a rest there. Got his composure back at the Optus RX-8. And we see him starting to challenge a little bit for that position as well. This is a nice little battle, though. Of course, it is the number 42 car. Thomas Derwent with uh, Lyle behind him. Just notice as well the smart boating racing entries. There's two of them out there underneath that brand. David Grice and Marty Lyle. Looking back now as the tyre wear starts to become a factor. He comes at 60. Uh oh! Through the dust. And it's the 82 car of Ash McConchie. Amazing place motorsport entry out of New Zealand. Beached as, bro. Beached as. He's had a big travel Ooh, over here. And he, he did say that they are slightly different races. The RX8 Cup over in New Zealand. And hopefully we are going to see some of our drivers go over and back and forth. And be part of some of the series he might throughout 2024. The, he might have got into the action, into the wall as as such for that. I know that TA2 are looking to possibly expand into New Zealand as well with a round or so of the championship there. So here's a look back. Oh, all by himself. And crunch. There's what it was. So it just swapped ends. Here we go, though. It is Luke Weber wants to Get in that third position and finish with a podium here in race number four. But Gordon out in the lead, getting up on the ripple strip. Wow. Final lap for him as well. He just needs to keep it together. He's almost out on the dirt. I reckon there's about two inches of tyre hanging over the edge of the track. Out on the ripple strip as he oh. runs it wide. And the dust flicks up again there, right on the exit. He's an exciting driver to watch. He's very low percentage and I love it. Love it. It makes our job easy, that's for sure. You don't want a guy that's just going to go out there and coast around. He's giving this thing a fair old caning. Look at this. He's all over the ripple strips. Gordo, get into it, son. That's just a very, very entertaining drive. He's gapped the field. I thought that battle between Lewis and Weber and Panaccia was probably going to play out a little bit more aggressively towards the end, but nice job by Lewis to be able to stem that flow. Yeah, Panaccia is just... Fallen out of that little battle at the moment. Maybe there might be an opportunity for Weber later in this race. But there you go. The final lap now as we come down. Turn number 10. Two more to go for Ryan Gorton. And he might finish this with another win. It was a race three winner. He's had to work through the field. Electrical issues in race number one. So he started out of 19th place in race number two. Oh, as he locks it up and slides it in to the second last corner here. <laughs> Final right-hander. The number 15 comes around. He sets himself up. And you'll hear the crowd in the background cheering him as he comes over to win this final race in the Yellow Express RX-8 Cup here at the High Tech Oil Super Series at Winton Motor Raceway. The chequered flag now shown Gordon gets the win. We're waiting now for the rest of the field. Justin Barnes makes it over in second position. Lewis ends up in third, and Luke Weber can't get that position. He's in fourth. Barnes, he was that thrilled. He was flashing the headlights as well as he came down towards the checkers just then. Panaccia, Lewis, Shaw, Silvestro, Bregulio, back to Derwent in the top ten. And you go back then to Marty Lyle, Noakes. I think Grice will be the next one through. That was an entertaining final. For the High Tech Oil Super Series Round 1, the Australian RX-8 Cup Series. Let's have a look, though, as the final results of the Yellow Ten Express RX-8 Cup. A 10-second lead, and he gets over the line. Ryan Gordon with a commanding win over Justin Barnes, and Justin Lewis in the Yellow Express RX-8 holds on. Luke Weber in fourth position that time, the SCM Mechanics RX-8. Marty Lyle was 11th, Jackson Noakes was 12th, David Grice 13th, William Hamm 14th, Maisie Blaze, good job, Maisie. 15th spot, Glenn Gamble, 
Jamie Canellis in 17th. Ash McConchie had some issues and unfortunately a DNS for Thomas Shaw. Let's head down to Steve. And the round winner for the Yellow Express Mazda RX-8 Cup, Justin Barnes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, what an awesome weekend. Um, Ryan's a bit too quick for me, but that's, that's fine. So I played it smart. Uh, but, yeah, no, very happy with the win. Very happy. Been a while. <laughs> well done. Well done. Back to you guys up the top. And after round one, this is how the championship looks. Justin Barnes leading with Luke Webber in second. Justin Lewis in third. Then it's Jack Panasia and Ben Shaw rounding out your top five. Well, we're not far away from hearing the rumble of the TA2 muscle cars. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back to round number one of the High Tech Oil Super Series here at Winton Motor Raceway. We've got the rumble of the TO2 muscle cars coming your way. Wade, this race is going to be super exciting. Into the fourth and final race of round one of the TO2 muscle car series. Framed by High Tech, and we'll see Wodongas, Wizkid, Jackson Wright on the pole. Lee Stibbs. Start alongside him in the Arrow Financial Services MBA Camaro. Nicholas Bates will line up at a position number three. From four will be Dylan Thomas. From five will be the Canberra Whiskey Josh Haynes. Alongside fellow 18 year old Hayden Hume. Wow, it's exciting. This fourth row. Michael Coulter and Zach LeShalpo will share the fourth row. Aaron Tebb and Graham Cheney will be back on the fifth row. Brett Gardner made it all the way to position 11. How is that? 16 spots in that last Watch race. him in this one too. Hayden Jackson right behind him. Here's a look back at what happened with Paul Hadley in the IES Motorsport Camaro. Keep your eye in the centre of the pack. It's a blue and chrome car. There's contact with he and Pappas just there. Boom! That just turns him hard right. He goes across the roadway. And he gets over the ripple strip. I think it might have been that return road there that rolled him over. He got sideways. Now watch it here in the background. Sideways, yeah. See how he hit that road? And that is what's launched the IES car. Pappas got a flat right front and some right front corner damage. Oh, we haven't seen this. This is on board with Hadley. Oh, my giddy aunt. Watch this. Round he goes here and then... Oh, wow. That's the first chance we've had a look at that situation from an in-car perspective for the likeable IES Motorsport team principal. And the good news was he climbed out of the car A-OK. -okay. Stibbs, the expat Pom and the Arrow Financial Services MBA entry alongside Wodongas. Jackson Rice in the Pettis suspension. Dream Racing Australia entry. Go back to the very clean number 24. Mustang of Nicholas Bates and Dylan Thomas. Boy, those boys have been at it all day. All weekend, even. So here we go, waiting for those red lights to go out. And we are green. Final race of the day, final race of the round. Boy, it's a great drone shot if we get out of the turn one. This looks better for Rice, no stibs. Oh, he ran wide there. Jackson will have a look at him up the inside. Under brakes, Pappas in trouble. Rice coming back, it's Dibs as they work their way down into turn two. Haynes coming after Bates, Thomas and Hume. And it's been an interesting opening lap already. Oh, someone off the racetrack. Is that Cheney perhaps? I think it is. So the blue and chrome entry, the IES number 51. Boy, it's been a tough day for the IES team, man. Hopefully he can rejoin that. Of course, Pappas went off very early there. Josh Haynes, though, with the advantage coming at turn number three. He got the move done on Dylan Thomas and the CXC Mustang, and now he is up into fourth position. So Nick Bates is going to have to watch out for the young gun who's moved his way up after having an unfortunate start in race number one with some temperature issues in the car. They've come back today and worked their uh -oh. way through the field, but this is, is ominous. It, is that the Shalpo, possibly? The Camaro from the back, and it's white. But I'm not sure if Zach LeShalpo possibly will have a look. There is Teb. Gartner is one to watch here for sure. Brad Gartner, we see Robinson and Lindstrom. So lap one of 12. Lee Stibbs, your leader, from Jackson Rice. Nicholas Bates, 
Josh Haynes, Dylan Thomas, Hayden Hume, Michael Coulter, Aaron Tebb, Brad Gardner, and Hayden Jackson. Now, I Gardner gets by Tebb. I haven't seen Lachalpo, Matty. It leads me to think that it was his car that had slowed. I can't believe how quick they've hooked that car up. It's like they have got it off track, so we won't see any yellows down that section of the racetrack. Hopefully, as we keep this battle underway, and look at Josh Haynes all over the back of Nick Bates and searching for that final spot on the podium for that third position. Hopefully, he can make it. We're very early on the race, though, and see if Haynes can maybe get past and try and challenge Jackson Rice. There is he takes a dive on the inside through Bates and they take the right hand around a turn number nine. And wow. Haynes looks like he might have got that done. Will Bates be able to come back and he was a head into turn number 10. Is he going to hold on to Bates down the inside? Not enough there to get up on the inside pillar and Haynes gives him a little bit yeah, of racing he did. room there. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. He did. He didn't turn across him. Hume, Hayden Hume is coming after Dylan Thomas as well. I, I'm really glad you pointed it out because I thought Haynes didn't shut the door. He's like, if you're good enough to be close enough there. Now look at the dodge. Hayden Hume right behind Dylan Thomas. This will be making mum and dad pretty excited. What a drive this is. Looking to make the move up the inside on Thomas. Stibbs is just right on the edge, isn't he, the whole time. Good little battle going on there. Then you go back to Coulter. Brad Gardner. So Gardner's up to position eight. Look at Hayden. Total pass plus dodge all over the back of Dylan Thomas. Three car battle. A pair of masters class drivers, a couple of pros in that battle. We see Stibbs. Pressure now coming from Jackson Rice. Now Jackson said, and we heard him, we're playing the long game. They want the championship. Lee Stibbs said, I'm praying to the God of mechanical failure you don't win. What a week coming in for him as well. I mean, we're not quite sure about the incident that happened there, but came into the week with a knee brace on as well. Oh, did, so. Thomas! Sorry, Matt, he just ran very wide. He got on the anchors, and I think we might see Hume get through. So something definitely happened there. I don't know whether Thomas just brake checked himself a little there or something. Gardner up behind Coulter now. It was in the kitchen, mate. Jackson Rice told me something happened in the kitchen. I don't know what he was doing. He's turned the wrong way. He's twisted his ankle and his knee in the kitchen. We can talk about being a Oh, trainer. no. Stibbs has spun around oh, here. Oh, no. Oh, that is devastating for Stibbsy. We don't know what happened. Did you catch all of it? I didn't. No, it was just the, the sight there as they come out. I think they might have come together because look at Haynes all over the back of Jackson Rice as they ignite this battle for first position. There was quite a gap there to Haynes to close that down. We'll have a look at the high tech oil screenplay now. Oh, wow. We'll wait and see if we can see something come up on our screens about any sort of penalties there. Hopefully it's not for Jackson Rice. He's been coming off a couple of wins here. There is Hayden Jackson in the 81 car. Stibbs is riding behind him. You've got Aaron Tebb in there as well. It's a bit of a result for Matt McKellen. He's up to position number 11. Maybe Whitey Helen gave him a motivational phone call and said, come on, Matt, fire up. Hume again right behind Bates. It's exciting, Matt, when you look at the number of youngsters in this top 10 even. Right, Haynes, Hume, Gartner, I'll tell you what, Jackson, there's a lot of youngsters. Big step in their motorsports career when they come into the TA2 muscle car racing as well. They move around on the track. A lot of work for Dylan Thomas, so he's fought back over here behind oh. him and gives him a little bit of a nudge. Is that a bit of payback from earlier? We're not quite sure. Oh, oh wow! That, now, that, that's a bit more than a nudge wave. Now, what is going on here? Oh, safety car. Now, this is going to be an intriguing situation to find out more about because Matty Cab was a Dylan Thomas Liberace payback. Or was there a problem already with Hume's car? I don't know. So let's have a look at the High Tech Oils Super Series replay. There was a lock up there, wasn't there? There was the front there for Hume. There was a bit of a. Now, is that there that there's a problem with the car right there? There was once or twice there, and then he did try to go around the outside. Yeah. Didn't he? Looked like from Dylan Thomas. Quite go wide enough, and now he's had to go through a few more to make his oh, way back to the wow. pack. Let's check out some of the high-tech goals highlights. 
that was Formosa getting into the side of Lindstrom just then. There was Pappas going off in the eight car. The other one you've got to think about with that as well, Matt, is the tyre conservation issue is Gartner. Because when you think about it, Gardner had his whole first race taken out. Well, there's where Cheney went off the road. I'd like to see that again somehow, to see what actually triggered that. But Gardner, he basically missed a whole race worth of wearing out the tyres when he was stuck underneath, ironically, the tyre bundle. And there we go. Green lights. And we are racing once again. Jackson Rice will lead us away. Josh Haynes and Nick Bates, our top three. Gardner is up to position five now. The bespectacled hard charger from Panola in South Australia. He's got Coulter in behind him. Hayden Jackson is in there as well. Gardner right up behind Thomas. It is on here. Gardner, Coulter, Jackson. Aaron Tab has been lively as well in the wall tech. Number 93. Good shot. There's the back on screen. Thomas, Gardner, Coulter. Jackson, Teb, McKeldon's up to position nine. And Lee Stibbs, after leading early, back in position 10 after that spin. He will be filthy. Now, there is Cheney trying to make a drive around the outside of Hollinger. So Graham Cheney will be pretty fired up. We didn't see, did he go on his own, Matty, or did someone help him in that incident towards turn five? We didn't really see that in the replay. I've been having a look at Jackson, though. He's been moving around from the back of Colton. Change the over here and look through. Now Colton going through and Jackson's been very, very loose behind him in that seventh position, trying to get some traction over rear tyres. Pappas has worked his way back now. You can see him down at the moment. Pappas in 19th position oh, after coming Coulter. off in that turn number one. And Coulter now throwing the rear of the car <laughs> out. The Camaro, look at it go. He's really had a blast driving that Camaro. There's no doubt about that. Great speed shot right there. Lap nine of 12. Jackson Rice, the only man in the 125 mark. He did that on lap number five. Spread out just a little bit. There's been some really impressive rookies and newcomers. Stibbs trying to get by the Kubota entry of McKeldon. Gets him. Stibbs squeezes through with the Camaro just ahead of the Mustang. You got Lang in there as well. Uh oh. Robinson. In the number 10 car, Robbo had a much better round last year here where he played a bit of a game with slick tyres and wets and things like that. And it was a bit of a masterclass. It's not been that way this year so far in the first round of the series. So Gartner trying to get by Thomas. Stibbs. So where's he back to now? Position 9. He got by McKeldon. So he's up to position 9. When you look at his points coming into that. That'll be the interesting part about that as well. Lap 9 about to be lap 10 of 12. Yes, this will be second points there for the round so far. If you can hold on to that position, I think McKeldon was very respectful on that turn oh. number 3 a little bit. But have a look at this. It's still underway for Mc... in the back there between Coulter and Jackson fighting it out for sixth position. Oh, look at this. Quickest time is now Haynes. 1 minute 25.5521. And Josh Haynes turning up the heat. Gardner really giving Thomas plenty to think about. He goes up the inside on Thomas. Can he hold it? Will he go in? Gee, Dillon off the racetrack and dropped a couple of spots. Hayden Jackson got him. Here comes Haynes. Just wait till we get our Haynes on you. Here comes Josh Haynes on Jackson Rice. Oh, it's going to be a ripper season. How much young talent, Matty Cab, have we got on display here today? We're expecting to see this in the first couple of races throughout this race meeting. And look, he dives down the inside. He's not going to get it done, though. And Haynes will have to just let Rice settle back into the groove as they go down the back to turn number 10. And we're having a look, a bit of a 10-second penalty there for Jenny as well. So we'll look into that a little bit later. Yeah, not sure what that means at all, Graham Cheney. We're almost into the last two laps right now. Haynes has really stepped up the pressure on Jackson Rice. This is a really good battle. They've gotten away from Bates in third. Dylan Thomas, not sure if it's tyre wear or something, but certainly he ran wide. Gartner got him. So here we go. That is Mike Vito right there, the MVA principal and the 
owner of the team that Lee Stibbs and Brad Gartner drive for. His boy is a heck of a racer in Porsches and also very handy in sprint cars as well. Cheney, a 10 second penalty for a safety car restart infringement. St. Brad might have been a bit fired up. Look at Haynes. Jackson Rice having to be a bit defensive here. Boy, it's been a good race. We work our way to the cleavage. Rice has been stout, looking to wrap up the round regardless. He doesn't want to get caught up here, Matt, that's for sure. He yeah, definitely don't want to make a mistake, and any contact made could force that car to turn around as Haynes takes another dive coming out of turn number eight. Ooh, it's on here. I've seen Josh do this with Jet Johnson. They went after it very similarly. The Pettis suspension number seven for Dream Racing up alongside Josh Haynes, the kid from the ACT. Got more pit crew on that team than McLaren Formula One. Here he comes up the inside. Rice went wide. Haynes was clever there. Last lap and we're sideways, Matty Cav. He slid that Mustang out, didn't he, Josh Haynes? And the fight here is can he get Jackson Rice on this final lap? The final race here at the High Tech Oil Super Series for this Sunday. Oh, no! There was contact just then. I think Haynes redressed. He definitely, I think, pulled out. You can see some damage. Missing a tooth on the normally cheeky grin of the 37. I get the feeling he laid back off the throttle not to go through. Oh, it is on. Jackson Rice needs to be really careful here, Matt. The round wind could go begging here. Oh, man, it's on like Donkey Kong. Final race of the weekend for the TA2 Muscle Car Series. Jackson Rice up against Josh Haynes. And we're going at it all the way to the end. You think Haynes wants this win? Oh, <laughs> Jackson's like, no. I want to go home and put an exclamation point on this. Last two corners. It has been a ripping race. Rice refusing to give in. Haynes on the outside. We're going to go all the way to the very end. The seven car of Rice. Look at Haynes. Look at him go back on the inside. Did he get him? I think he might. They're going to go side by side. Oh, Haynes. I think he's going to pull this off. What a finish. Haynes will get the win. My giddy aunt. What a race that was. Maddie Kavanagh. All the way down to the final metres of the race. That final corner where Haynes with the crisscross gets on the inside. Oh, no, he spun out on the final corner oh, as Teb. well. That's Aaron Teb, who was under attack there from Stibbs a bit earlier in the race. I don't know if something's happened there. But look at Brad Gartner, third position. What a move from him to get back into this and get some points to start off the series. Let's take a look at the results. I know that Matty Cab is going to be heading down to do some presentation interviews as well. God, that was good. That was a bare knuckle pub brawl. Josh Haynes, your winner by 0.19 of a second. Brad Gardner gets third. Michael Coulter gets fourth. Hayden Jackson, good job on debut. Top five. Dylan Thomas, six. Nicholas Bates, seventh. Lee Stibbs drove back to eighth. Matt McKeldin inside the top ten. Nick Lang, good top ten for him. He finishes tenth. We go back to Hugh McAllister in 11th. John Hollinger in 12th, one of his best rounds. Chris Papath got back to 13th. Adam Hargraves, 14th. Chris Vermosa, 15th. Greg Keane, good to see the guy from Canada. Got it across the line. Mick Rowell, Bernie Walsh, Rob Leonard. Graham Cheney with a big penalty for a restart safety car infringement. Fantastic weekend to start off in the first three races, but race four got turned around. What happened there? Uh, yeah, I just unfortunately heading down into the second to last corner. Um, as I turned in, I, I got spun. Um, I tried to keep the, the, the foot in and spin me back around, but you know, it put me on the grass and, and uh, you're like a Bambi on ice trying to get off the grass and, and, and onto the bitumen again. But uh, we'll let, we'll let you know, the powers to be decide exactly what happened. That's not, that's not my decision. My decision is to just get in the thing and drive it as fast and as hard as I can. Um, 
we obviously race in this category. Everyone speaks down the pit lane to, to try and be firm and fair, but give racing room. And um, I'll assume this one was a mistake. Obviously, Lightning generally doesn't strike twice. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, I've come off second best in that one. Josh Haynes, what a weekend. You've had some big challenges. Race number one with some engine issues, but you fought your way back. And finally, that number one. Yeah, it's been a very, very hot weekend, so we've all been struggling out there with uh, the car and temperatures. Obviously, the first race, we got a bit unlucky and the car got a bit hot. Uh, we made the decision to retire it. Um, but to think, you know, race two was starting 25th and now we've come in as the number one car. So pretty, pretty excited. Uh, the team has done an unreal job. It's so special to have such a, like a great pe group of people around me. Um, the category's done an awesome job. Jax and I had a really close battle there and uh, yeah, luckily I came away with the win. So I'd just like to thank Beaches Sea-Doo, Herzog Steel, Chapman Floor Coverings, SOS Recruitment, Car Bids uh, and Elvin Group for sticking by me. It's been an awesome weekend. Let's have a look at the points after round number one with Lee Stibbs coming away in first position after a post-race penalty to Jackson Rice that puts him back into second. Then it's Dylan Thomas in third, Nicholas Bates in fourth and Michael Bates rounds out your top five. It was an exciting weekend of racing here at Winton Motor Raceway. Very tight in the points already, and we've seen some of our young guns not start off the way they wanted to. It's going to head north next, though, up to Darwin, Northern Territory, where they continue the fight for the championship across this six-round series. Of course, Hidden Valley Raceway, Darwin, Northern Territory, April 29 to the 1st of May. It's going to be a long weekend up there. Hope you can come party with us. On behalf of the commentary team, thanks for watching. We'll see you at round number two.